Dirty Dealings, Corporate Battles, Consumer Wars. This is Evening 5. Putrajaya has offered Gamuda's 60% owned SRS consortium civil works contracts on the first segment of the Penang LRT. It hopes to conclude negotiations within six months and have construction begin by the fourth quarter of this year, with completion expected in 2030. Transport Minister Anthony Lok said the consortium was offered the job after a single sourcing request for proposal. The offer is based on a request by the Penang state government, which had appointed SRS SRS as the project delivery partner of the Penang Transportation Master Plan or PTMP in 2015. The value and details of the contracts are subject to talks between the consortium and finance ministry-owned MRT Corp, the line's developer and asset owner. Meanwhile, the construction of an operations depot and a transit-oriented development project at Tapapista Sunganibong will be jointly carried out by MRT Corp and the Penang State Government. Locks at the new strategy aims to generate additional non-fare revenue that is important to be reinvested in the maintenance of the Penang LRT in the future. The new line will stretch from Silicon Island to Komta and cross over to Penang Central in Sebrang Prai to provide connectivity to the existing KTM commuter and ETS train network. The Kuala Lumpur High Court has ordered FGV Holdings' former chairman Tan Sri Muhammad Isa Abdul Samad and its former CEO Datuk Muhammad Emir Mavani Abdullah to repay a cumulative 3.3 million ringgit to the group for wrongful use of two luxury condominium units acquired by the company. The Troika condominium units were originally meant to serve as accommodation for FGV's business associates or guests. Instead, the units were renovated, furnished and maintained for the use of Muhammad Isa, Muhammad Emir and their family members. Judge Dato Muhammad Arif Emran Arifin ordered Muhammad Isa to pay 990,502 ringgit to FGV and Muhammad Emir to reimburse 2.32 million ringgit. He ruled that they had not acted in the company's interest, though they did not breach their duties as the purchase of the units were in line with the board's resolution and FGV still owns the apartments and suffered no damages from the acquisition. He did find that Muhammad Emir had breached his duties by abusing the company's carpool system and use of petrol cards. The court ordered 200,000 ringgit in costs per defendant. LTAT has appointed the country's former Defence Force Chief, General Retired Tanjri Azizan Arifin, as its new chairman, and Mohammad Ashraf Mohammad Radzi as its CEO, effective April 1st. The new appointments fill the vacancies left following the abrupt departures of the fund board's ex chairman, Tanjri Raja Mohammad Afandi Raja Mohammad Noor, and former CEO Dato Ahmad Nazim Abdul Rahman in early February and end January. LTAT said its new chairman Azizan's extensive background in military affairs, diplomacy and leadership development will be instrumental in guiding the fund board towards its strategic objectives and enhancing its role in supporting the welfare of armed forces personnel and their families. Azizan served the Malaysian Armed Forces for 40 years and was also formerly the chief of the country's air force. Mohammad Ashraf, meanwhile, is assuming the role of CEO following his tenure as LTAT's CFO since March 2020. He trained as an accountant with Ernst & Young before completing a stint with UBS Investment Bank and then eventually ending up at Ahmad Zaki Resources, where he rose to the position of CFO. Oil palm plantation player MKH Oil Palm East Kalimantan began taking orders from investors for its initial public offering on the main market that would raise up to 155.43 million ringgit. The IPO, which is priced at 62 cents apiece, comprises a public issuance of 220 million new ordinary shares, representing 21.5% of the enlarged share capital, as well as an offer for sale of 30.7 million existing shares, or 3% of the enlarged share capital, by way of private placement. Out of the 220 million new shares, 51.21 million shares are available to the public, while 168.7 9 million shares are reserved for private placement to select investors. 
Applications for the IPO will be closed on April 16th, while the listing is set for April 30th. Upon listing, MKH will have a market value of 634.6 million ringgit. The company sees a price-to-earnings ratio of 20.3 times, based on its FY 2023 net profit of 30.4 million ringgit. It plans to use 42 million ringgit or 30.8% of the proceeds to acquire land for oil palm plantations in East Kalimantan and 9 million ringgit or 6.6% to set up a palm kernel crushing facility. Another 42 million ringgit or 30.8% will be used for capex for existing plantation land, upkeep of its existing palm oil mill, the refurbishment of staff housing quarters and the expansion of electricity supply. 33 million ringgit or 22% will be set aside for loan repayments and 13.4 million ringgit or 9.8% for working capital and listing expenses. Northeast Group, which manufactures precision components, has filed for an initial public offering on Bursa Malaysia's ACE market to raise funds for expansion, including the construction of a new factory costing over 50 million ringgit. According to its draft prospectus, the IPO involves a public issue of 168.99 million new shares and offer for sale of 51.8 million existing shares. The exercise would offer investors up to a 30% stake in the firm. Penang based Northeast mainly manufactures components used in the photonics, electrical and electronics, semiconductor, telecommunication and optoelectronics industries for both local and foreign clients, including from the US, the UK, Thailand, Singapore, Canada and Germany. It also provides surface finishing, sheet metal fabrication and mechanical subassembly. The company recorded a profit after tax of 18.36 million ringgit on the back of revenue of 93.34 million million ringgit for the financial year ended September 30th, 2023.